Hey there, my name is Mike Montgomery, and today I'd like to show you how I built this round coffee table with hairpin legs and a pattern top on modern builds. I'm gonna be building this table in Whittier, California at my buddy Chris Salamone's shop from the channel Four Eyes Furniture. Myself, along with Ben Ueda from Homemade Modern and Johnny Brook from Crafted Workshop were all in town collaborating over the weekend. What you've seen me do so far is cut this piece of two inch thick oak into three 31 inch long pieces. Eventually, this is gonna make a 30 inch wide tabletop because each of these boards are a little over 10 inches wide. This tool is called a joiner, and it's used to create one perfectly square edge on a board so that it can then be referenced by another tool later on, like a table saw. Now y'all don't really see me use this on modern builds very often, and that's why I had Johnny Brook there giving me a hand to make sure I was using the tool proper. Each pass took a little under a sixteenth of an inch, so after that second pass on each of the boards, we had a good square edge. Damn it. Oh, awesome, you're a woodworker now. On each board, I referenced that square edge on the table saw fence, and I cut it to its final width. This is gonna make sure all three boards are the exact same size, and that both of the edges are perfectly square. Before gluing anything up, I used Chris's 3 8 inch doweling jig from Rockler. Since I'm using hairpin legs for this table, I wanna make sure that I have really strong glue joints, and that's exactly what this doweling jig is gonna ensure. And since I'm gonna be cutting a pattern into the top of the table, I made sure to install all of these dowels on the underside of each of these boards. I really like doweling jigs a lot. I use them all the time, and I've never had a glue joint that I've used them on fail me. Not to mention, all you need is a drill to pair it with, instead of having a whole separate tool. After spreading a healthy amount of Gorilla wood glue along each of my edges, I applied glue to each of the dowels and knocked them into place. Woo. Then I came back with a silicone glue brush to make sure I had good, even coverage on each of my boards, then clamped it all tight. I went ahead and sanded everything up to 150 grit before making any of my relief cuts. I just figured it'd be easy to get it done with now. After that, I grabbed one of Chris's rulers and a pin, and I made marks everywhere I wanted to make a relief cut on the top of the table, starting at a quarter of an inch. As I went, I started spacing out my lines so that my cuts would create a gradient, almost like a sunset pattern. Since Chris was using the table saw a lot that day to cut the pieces for his project, I set up his Craig ACS, which stands for the Adaptive Cutting System, so that I could make all of my relief cuts using the track saw. All I had to do was line up my cut marks with the edge of the track. Then I could lock it into place, set the depth of my track saw, which was an eighth of an inch, and then start making my relief cuts. Now I've gotta admit, I was genuinely impressed by the Craig ACS. It made clean cuts, was relatively quick and convenient, and the fact that it folds so compact is great, and I really look forward to having it in my shop back home in Oklahoma. I just kept making my relief cuts and moving my tabletop so that the track lined up with my cut marks until I had eventually cut them all. My gaps between cuts started at an eighth of an inch and ended at an inch and a quarter. I also decided to leave about a six inch space on one side of the table where I made no relief cuts at all. Really quickly, I'd like to say thanks to a sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. Squarespace is the one-stop shop for a professional designer level website. And the best part, you can build it yourself. That's right, Squarespace's library of built-in designer templates look incredible right out of the box, but they're incredibly easy to customize for a one-of-a-kind look. 
About four years ago, whenever I built the Modern Builds website, I used Squarespace. At the time, it was just a simple website that was a portfolio of my work. Since then, I've used Squarespace to create more in-depth written articles, downloadable PDF plans, even an online store. In my personal life, I recommend Squarespace all the time and I'm incredibly proud to be able to recommend Squarespace to you all as well. So if you wanna start your own website, portfolio, online store, or anything else that you can dream up, follow the link down in the description, squarespace.com forward slash modern builds. And don't forget to use the code modern builds at checkout for 10% off your first site. Thanks Squarespace. It's time to cut this table blank into a table round. And to do that, I'm using the Rockler Circle Cutting Jig in a 3 quarter inch double flute straight bit. After finding the center of the blank, I drilled a hole so that the pivot point on the jig has somewhere to lock into. Then I could turn my router on and use the plunge base to start cutting into the top. Now you don't want to do all of this in one pass. That's going to remove way too much material and that's not safe. I cut about a quarter of an inch per pass. This is another one of those awesome rockler jigs that I totally recommend. My one tip though is to be really cord conscious while you're cutting your circles. I couldn't cut all the way through the tabletop blank with the router, so I used the jigsaw to cut away as much of the excess material as possible. Then I loaded up a flush trim bit in the router to clean everything up. This bit has a bearing on it that references the cut that we made with the circle jig. That way, the edge of the tabletop is perfectly smooth and flush. You can pick up these 16 inch eye symbol hairpin legs from Rockler as well. It comes in a set of four, but as me and Chris were laying everything out, we ended up deciding that three legs looked best. While I have a second, I'd like to extend a thanks to Rockler for making this whole weekend of collaborations possible. Not only will all the guys' videos be linked in the description, but so will all of the tools and jigs from Rockler that I've used. Not only does Rockler support my content, but so many other creators in our community. And for that, I want to say thanks, Rockler. Lately on the Modern Maker podcast, we've been talking about having restraint when it comes to designing furniture, and I think that this project is a good example of that. The base is super simple, it's just hairpin legs with a round top, but that simplicity allows the texture and the pattern to really shine through, which is awesome. Lately in my videos, I've been trying to take my simple DIY designs one step further, and on this project, I'm gonna be staining my entire tabletop black and I'm gonna be using India ink. The convenient part about that is Johnny Brook actually has experience using this, and he's gonna be walking me through the process, making sure I don't mess anything up. This is the same ink that you would use in a calligraphy or fountain pen, and I was surprised at how thin it was, almost like water. We both gently loaded up a foam brush, making sure that we wouldn't have any drips or runs, and then started applying the ink across the tabletop. We were really careful not to put too much pressure as we got close to any of the edges so that we didn't have any runs go into the relief cuts. And this pigment is stupid strong. After a single coat, we got some Maker Brand Simple Finish with wax and applied a couple coats to finish this table off. I really hope you enjoyed this project. It was a ton of fun for me being in Chris's shop with friends in such a collaborative environment. Of course, he's got an awesome shop with killer tools, but what I valued more out of this weekend was the ability to bounce ideas off of one another and to be more confident trying new things, leaning on other people's experience. Oh, and don't forget to vote in the comments whether you like the table before or after we stained it with the India ink.